Bank stocks have been the best performers lately with half a dozen banking stocks hitting all time highs yesterday. Banks are also seeing a bunch of upgrades to their earnings due to higher than estimated margins, lower than feared credit costs, higher loan growth expectations, etc. We heard from a public sector banker. Joining us now is a prominent private sector banker. Uh, this bank, uh, besides seeing earnings upgrades, is also in the grip of some merger speculation. I have with me Sham Srinivasan, the CEO and Managing Director of Federal Bank. Sham, thank you very much indeed for finding time for us uh, uh, on a day after Onam. Happy Onam to you. Well, I just wanted to ask you, you know, you your stock would have been at all-time highs, except that it stole the thunder on Monday with this buzz of uh, uh, you know, a probable possible merger with uh, Kotak Bank. Can you tell us on the record what is the status? Are you talking to Kotak or to anyone on merger issues? No, I think uh, an internal communication I made had caught the public attention. So I don't think there's any speculation of any nature. Besides making an uh, exchange clarification, I made it very clear that uh, A, there is no such conversation, nor is there a requirement. Uh, we've been for long building something that's special. I've always mentioned we are trying to build the most admired bank and uh, that's not going away. And all our intention is something to build to last. So there is no question of such a conversation. I don't know where these things crop up from, uh, but I think that's buried and moved on. Oh, okay. No, I'll tell you where it may have cropped on because uh, there was conversation in the market. There is a question of after Sham, who? You've been at the helm of what, uh, 12 years? Uh, and, uh, you know, there is uh, a, a, a feeling that, uh, you know, it's so large, is there a second, a second rung and therefore will even RBI be happy if it is merged? Any thoughts? Well, I think that's a very presumptuous statement to make that, you know, after Sham, what we bad deep. First of all, I'm not going away. No, no, no. Years. You have till 24 anyways. I'm not saying you're going away. But what I'm saying is that could have triggered this thinking. No, no, I think we back very deep. I think I've said that often. The board has a very good succession plan. And, you know, should the need, need arise, there will be very many better people in the market who will be up for taking this job. We are good bank, doing very well. So I think that's, uh, you know, honestly, that's in the realm of speculation and we should just uh, not give it too much attention. I don't want to take away the focus of the bank on doing something special, which we are doing as you probably be observing. And I don't think that should be anything that should distract us from that. No, there's no denying uh, that uh, you're doing extremely well. Always a bank noted for its liability franchise. But uh, let me just read out the latest report. Uh, Morgan Stanley's base case is uh, a stock price of 147 for federal. And the bull case is 212 rupees. Uh, you tell us on the ground, uh, are things looking very good uh, for the banks? Is it the best in 10 years or the best in 15 years that you have seen? Well, if you look at the industry credit data, you know, I'm sure all of us are following. Uh, some, some, some reports suggest that you haven't seen credit growth of this magnitude in the last seven, eight years. And I have been around for a long time, never seen growth of this nature in the first, say, 100, 120 days of a financial year. And uh, the good news is it's broad based. The good news is I think uh, corporates are coming back to banks, uh, SME is back. But I think really the biggest. Uh, Happiest and most positive development has been how SMEs have come back. And I see that as a big, big sign of sort of economic progress and importantly, an opportunity for us to grow. Uh, the challenge will remain how do banks garner deposits and continue to be able to fund growth. And banks like us, which have had a <coughs> traditionally strong liability franchise, are better positioned and when you're well capitalized, have a good liability franchise and uh, capitalized well. I do believe this is a good opportunity and I haven't, uh, at least in the last three, four years, we haven't had a situation like this, uh, which has been very positive for and sort of abating good growth. Oh, that's a very, very optimistic bullish statement you're making. Uh, you know, the uh, 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 standard brokerage report is speaking about higher than expected NIMS because cost of funds have not gone up so much. I mean, basically with the Reserve Bank uh, rise in rates, deposit rates have not gone up as much as lending rates have because many of them are externally benchmarked. Is that a good guess that, for instance, for Federal Bank, margins will be higher than what it was in the previous uh, uh, couple of quarters and loan growth will be better than what it was for the previous two quarters? 
we pass that uh, into parts. Known growth will be better as it has been in our first quarter, and I see no reason why that should stack off in second or even following quarters. The margin is a function of many things, uh, as you probably know. One is the cost of funds is only one element. How is the super yes, and for the reversal in interest income is another. And the shape or the mix of business, right? If you're doing very good credit quality businesses today, they can command pricing. So I think the blend of all these things play into the margin, but that said, a near term margins will widen only because the credit gets repriced faster than the liabilities when the rates are going up. So you may see an uptick in a quarter or two, but on a sustained basis, that will sort of moderate. I don't believe that will, uh, the, the jaw will open up so much that the margin will continuously expand. But I think the business makes the credit quality and your cost of liabilities will be defining how margins are. And we, you know, we've been guiding for something between 325 or so, 325, 327 for the full year. And I'm sure that we should be able to deliver on that. Okay. With that picture of you uh, giving a loan to a robotics company uh, through the robot uh, became, uh, went viral. Uh, I mean, specific, uh, more specifically, what is this? I mean, how do you do due diligence for a company like this? And more generally, what is firing for you in terms of the SME? Which category? Uh, or basically, which is the asset franchise that's uh, working for you? No, I, like I mentioned, you know, the uh, in, I'll come to this specific logo company, which when I was pleasantly surprised to see such a wide followership for that post. Uh, but in general, the credit expansion has been very uh, sort of broad based. We've seen corporates come back to the banking system, as you know, most of last year or the prior previous year, they were you know alternate sources of money were there. Now I think they've just definitely come back to the banking system. So that itself is uh, you know there's a fair amount of demand coming from that. Uh, as a consequence of that, as capacity expansion is probably now uh, something that's top of mind for some of the good corporates. You're seeing as that investment comes in, uh, corporate demand is going up and the downstream effect of their supply chain also uh, requiring more credit. So I think expansion and credit on that count has been quite marked. Retail, thankfully, has never slacked off. You know, it's been quite consistent, except for retail unsecured, at least for us. We were not very big on retail unsecured. I'm beginning to see that uh, with the risk level sort of moderating better, that is also picking up. So that's how I see credit uh, on a broad-based basis. Specific to this company and specific to our SME franchise, uh, this company is in the manufacture of logo. They have uh, been at it for quite some time. Uh, it's been a sort of a relationship where they were a vendor to us in some parts. Recently, we found that both they have demand and an opportunity, and we, so we, we decided to be a lender to them. Uh, and the uh, sort of interesting part is they received the sanction letter okay. by the robot yes, yes. Coming, to our, uh, coming to collect it. So I think that's sort of part of public imagination, which is nice. Oh, absolutely, and, uh, caught my eye. Yeah, go ahead. So the, 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 the segments like this, okay. uh, which, are, which are so-called new age, which are so-called looking to expand uh, and seize these digital enhancements that are happening, are actually coming to be uh, quite interesting because these are not large tickets, these are one, two crores in most of the tier two towns. A lot of such things is happening, whether it's Kerala, Tamil Nadu, mm. parts of uh, Maharashtra. We're seeing a lot of such, uh, I would say, one to five crore kind of credit demand picking up quite interestingly. Okay. And with digital reach and with a sort of uh, ability to take credit expand, uh, and predict that this may be an interesting segment to grow in the coming period. That's always an interesting segment and you know the nation itself will be very grateful, the governments will be grateful if that segment can be given loans. But are you, do you all have more AI or ML or uh, you know data in place now to believe that this segment will deliver and that you will not be uh, you know having to suffer slippages? I think this segment is uh, bound to grow because if you look at uh, as you probably know, we are working with a lot of innovation and a lot of hubs around, even the uh, Reserve Bank's innovation hub we are working with. These are all projects that are targeted at catching these relatively uh, new to business and new using digital capabilities and how they can monetize data. And I see that as coming to be a big opportunity. This company, which is specific to what we are talking of, uh, their logo is uh, a fair number of industries and it's got enough scalability and adaptability uh, with, with more and more more people looking at these as opportunities to either automate digitize and or enhance their manual capabilities these are okay. becoming uh, quite 
Fair enough. Okay. All right. Uh, let me, like Oliver Twist, ask for more. Sham, y'all have always had an excellent uh, liability franchise, but y'all don't get beyond that ROA of one percent. Uh, you know, tell us if you can achieve that, because you say the going is good. No, I, I think uh, that conversation would have been true a year back. Lata, if you see our numbers in the last, let's say, three quarters, we've passed well past one, and our guidance for this year is one point one five. Uh, the following year, 1.25 as exit rates, and I think we are on course for that. The market guns for two, isn't it? Because that's the mark of the gold standard. Yeah, I mean, uh, barring one or two banks, uh, show me banks that have had yes. two on. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree. But then the, everybody doesn't have a liability franchise like you. Yeah, so I think uh, I mean I don't like to sort of uh, trivialize the question, but I think. If you look at uh, consistency and if you look at a Dravid kind of play, then you have to be consistent across time, not yes. just have flat. Yes, <laughs> I proudly say that we are in that space. Yes, so we may not have been the best bank on ROA for a few years, but over a ten-year period, I think we come out better than many others. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I mean, I, just as a goal, it's a great one to have, considering that you'll have built a very sticky liability franchise. Uh, uh, okay, uh, let me end where I began. You know, I began with this merger question. If you all have to buy something, you know, an NBFC or a fintech or even a bank, what would the considerations be? Would it be geographical? Uh, would it be technology? Uh, how would you think of inorganic expansions? This is absolutely blue sky, so I've got to think along with you. Uh, see, if you look at our franchise now, uh, what we would like certainly is businesses are a slightly higher margin, right? I mean, we, we've built a very sticky priority franchise, credit quality has been quite exemplar, our margins are not the top of the line, so certainly businesses that are margin negative, negative would be a good opportunity. For long, we've been talking about growing microfinance, but, uh, you know, it's sort of been a in and out game. Every time we are interested in something, something happens in the market and it sort of goes away. That's right. So if, if there is a scalable microfinance opportunity, absolutely, yes, we would be interested. Um, NBFCs and others have to make sense from a point of view of uh, uh, whether they are margin accurate. If it's businesses that are doing the same thing that we're doing, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. Unless it gives us geographical expansion into territories that we are sort of not materially present. Okay. So, short answer, uh, we will look for opportunities that may be margin accurate and opportunities that are very interesting. But I must add quickly, uh, lest it becomes another speculation, this is yeah. absolutely <laughs> okay. No, 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 I didn't intend it as a speculation. Thank you very much, Shab, uh, for joining us with all these details. What I am taking away from this conversation is that times are very good for the banking sector and that a veteran banker believes that he has not uh, seen such uh, excellent times for bankers in some time now. Uh, with that, we wind up on this conversation. Up next is Shortpasters. <laughs>